just got back home, so I wrote down a couple things, but the rest I'm just going to tell you the truth. As long as you tell the truth, you don't have to worry about making a lot to cover up another one. Hey everyone, I'm here to um, basically tell my story about what happened to me at the Han Company in Cedartown and um, the discrimination and racism I experienced that started from pretty much the first month after the first month I was there, I experienced it. I started out on Line 3, uh, third shift, working as a work sale operator and um, from the get, I wasn't very much liked by two of the African-American girls that worked there. Um, didn't really like me, didn't take a liking to me, so um, they were making comments like Snow Bunny and um, little, little White Girl and just uh, comments like that. So I would deal with that and then it got so severe with one of the co-workers um, that my PTL actually had to come out on the floor and um, Bing came out on the floor that worked at Han and witnessed uh, the intense the intense attitude and her her body posture and he really he seen what was going on and um, they eventually let her go um, I'm not really sure what they let her go for but they did fire her and um, they worked towards firing the other lady which um, quit so uh, I decided that I didn't want to work in that department anymore. I decided that that line wasn't going to be for me. I wanted to do something else. So I bit it off and I bit it off into a work cell operator on first shift at the line company. And um, I wanted to be on first shift so I could better serve my children. And um, I had a pretty good, um, a pretty good flow going. Um, I experienced sexual harassment. Um, there was a guy named Kylie Smith that, that um, basically would come into the sale and, and be like, damn, you're hot. I'd screw you and, and just all kinds of nasty negative attitude and that, you know, like negative, just body language and just got close to me and was just very touchy every time. So I ended up reporting that to my PTO at the time, which was Mark. And Mark talked to Kylie, and uh, Kylie did not stop the behavior, but it didn't. It didn't really. Um, he didn't really come around and say as much anymore. So I do assume he did talk um, a little bit to him about that. Um, anyway, I was um, really interested in sewing, and I got the job uh, Zach Casey gave me. I got a pretty good raise, and. Um, it come around to the 2016 election of Donald Trump and um, I had a really good friend which um, was um, nicknamed Wee Wee and um, we were really close and I put it on social media that I voted for Trump. Everybody at work knew I voted for Trump. I actually wore a Trump shirt to work one day and um, this lady um, named Baby Doll um, was not even with the Han Company. She was uh, basically someone who come by to pick up the trash and stuff. And she was an African American, and and um, she asked me what I thought, who who I wanted to, who I was going to vote for. And I told her I was going to vote for Trump. And she said, Well, I'm going to vote for Hillary. And you know, at the time, I thought, Okay, well, you know, Hillary does have it. She's probably going to win the election, but. Um, she walked off, nothing else was said. After the election and he became our president, uh, she was changing the trash and she came in that morning and she looked pretty angry. And um, I asked her, I said, well, what do you think about the election? And she, she just started saying, fuck you bitch and you fucking white trash and, and all you fucking white people got that motherfucker in here and, and fuck Donald Trump, fuck you. And, and I mean, she just went ballistic in front of the whole department. And, um, and I was so embarrassed and ashamed. I really wanted to quit at the point, but I decided, I decided that I was going to go in there and just and face her every day. Um, but the day that that stuff happened, I went and reported it to Human Resources. Um, Crystal, which is the human resource that Han came out and um, 
I don't know what happened to correct her behavior, but she, from then on, she came by. She, she was there every day after that. She came by, picked the trash up, and the trash can was in front of me. After she had said these things to me, I didn't feel comfortable with her walking by me. So um, I personally moved the trash can. I moved the trash can to the other side of the um, technical sewer out. And um, nothing else was said to me by her. But after that, all my work started coming back. Um, people started bringing my sewing back. And um, I just didn't, I, I, I was fixing to lose my job over quality. Um, it got to the point to where I was rode up. I was rode up over quality. I've never been rode up. I'm an excellent worker. And um, I got rode up for my quality. So I thought I was on the verge of losing my job. So I decided that I was going to bid on line three, utility. Uh, more money, it was better pay, and it was going to be on third shift. And um, my husband actually worked third shift as well. So I decided to take the utility job um, that Steve McElroy gave me. Um, I was working on the line for about, I'd say, six months. Um, the first two months um, was okay. But at the end of that, I guess, second month, um, I had a lot of problems um, with, <laughs> with uh, Sheila Wells, um, which was another co-worker that worked there. She, um, she, uh, she threatened me. She threatened me for the first time when I was working back there with her um, riveting. Um, she said, somebody um, better get this white bitch out from back here. And, and I got gone. I got gone, I went to the front of the line, and I kind of stayed away um, from her. I tried to sustain from her. I didn't want to be around that. So I reported it to my boss. My boss called a meeting, called it, called uh, Sheree in, and Sheree had actually uh, witnessed uh, Sheila saying these things to me. Well, Mike McCollin told me, he said, I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to get them out of my department, so just hold tight. And I kept on listening to that, and another month went by. And uh, she would engage in conversations with the woman that was in front of her, and she would say, um, you know, things about me, but not directly like looking at me. But she'd be like, that white bitch don't know what she's doing. Though, how in the hell are they gonna give her that utility job? Watch her bounce her white ass around this line. I mean, just all kinds of calm, just, um, just very, very, um, I don't know, rude and hateful all the time. Every time I come back there, she just, just stiff up and look at me all mean. And we had no leadership when I first came over there. And I would do the meetings. I would call the meetings, and when I was doing the meetings, she would try to talk over me. And um, it was just, she was just very disrespectful. So uh, the last night I worked at the Hunt Company was on the 19th um, of August, and uh, Sheila Wells threatened me again which was the last time I was gonna let her threaten me. Uh, she told me that um, if I didn't get my ass out from back there, she was gonna whoop my ass. She uh, snatched a cabinet out of my hand. Um, she, she, she wanted to fight me that night. And I felt like if I would've stayed there at the Han Company, I would've had to fight her that night. And this was, this is a, like a 45 year old lady we're talking about here. And, um, I would address her as ma'am. I mean, I, I just, I, I, I didn't want to put my hands on her. And so I went to my PTL and my PTL um, was nowhere to be found. So I stood on the line. Well, when my PTL come back, he says, what are you doing? Get to work, get to work. And it just, I was already nervous and, and, and shaking. So I basically t turned around and, and um, I stopped and I turned back around. I said, Mike, I can't. And he's like, just go back there and go to work. And so I started working on the drawer line. And he's like, Amanda, I need you to go rib it. And that's where Sheila Wells was at. And um, I turned my radio in that night. And I walked out. And um, I resigned from my job. And uh, I lost my house. I get 277 on unemployment check when I was making like six, seven hundred dollars. 
So it's been really hard on me and my family. And um, I stood on a street corner with a stop discrimination, stop racism um, sign. And I paid $500 up front for, for a lawyer in Atlanta, Georgia. And it took me about three hours to find this guy because his um, address was inaccurate on the website. But uh, I got there to only come in to do someone who thought I was there for the money. And uh, was he so wrong? Um, he told me uh, comments like, well, the EOC is, you know, since the Trump administration is in office, uh, the EOC, and, and, you know, they favor the employer more than they favor the employee. And um, just discouraged me a lot and told me that me being a white woman uh, going up against a, a black person probably wouldn't be so good. Uh, white, you know, and I've had that told from somebody in Cedartown, a lawyer in Cedartown actually told me the same thing, uh, that it's harder for a white, a white woman to get a case. Um, and it's definitely hard for a white man to get a racist case. Um, I just refuse to hear that rhetoric anymore. I refuse to um, be a part and engage in discrimination. And uh, I voted for Trump because I think Trump goes hard. I didn't vote for Trump because I'm racist. By all means, I'm not a redneck, but you know, I don't discriminate against them, but I'm just me. And um, I was a good worker and I lost my job over someone who basically just just honoring and hateful and had hatred in their heart and uh, I have a voice recording and uh, people on the line witnessed these things and you know at the end there there were people coming from sewing over there talking to her you know the ones that heard the the argument with the other lady was coming to that line talking to people on that line and it just becomes so hostile it just becomes so unbearable um, my husband was banned from my apartment um, there was a guy who lifted a radio up off the back of my pants. I had it in my pocket. He lifted it up. And my husband seen it, and my husband uh, told him not to put his damn hands on his wife no more. And um, my husband was banned from my part department after that. And um, after I resigned from Han, uh, the lady was promoted to my husband's department. Um, when my husband saw the PTL, Gary Mitchell walking her to her new job, her, where she got a raise, by the way, um, my husband resigned. He turned his uh, his ID in and he resigned. And uh, now he was working at Sooners, it's all the way in Rome, 12 hours. Don't make nowhere near what he made at Han, when she was at Han for six years. Um, and he quit sooner today. And, you know, this is just, this is hard. I, I, I loved my job and um, I'm not trying to go against the Han company, but you can't, you can't do people like that. That's, that's not right, it's not fair. The sexual harassment throughout the years that I was there, I had a man rub his thing up on me. I had a guy grab my butt. I, it's just, it's just, it's crazy what happens on third shift at the Han Company. And you would be surprised to know how many drugs flew through that place on third shift, actually. Um, it's crazy. Um, they, 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 you know, they do swabs that go back three days. You know, you got people up there pushing pills out of that place to you. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable what, what people can do. And, um, I just, I, I don't want to work for a company like that. I'm a good person, I'm a hard worker, and I deserve a good job, and I won't settle for anything less. And that's my story, and I'm hoping that somehow, some way, there'll be some justice in this situation. So I'm gonna pursue going to court. I'm gonna fight like hell. It's not for your money. It's not for the money of the Han Company. It's for the simple fact that I was discriminated against, I was threatened, and my PTL and my GL failed to protect me. And um, So were there other other women that you think maybe went through the same thing? The other women? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I went and reported it to uh, Mike McCall, Mike McCall told me he was gonna get those women out of that department. 
So uh, one of the women that worked on the line, Lolo, she, she was put in a paint room and uh, she um, basically had a really hard job. I mean, she was making more money, but it's, she came back to the line that, that last night I was working and said they were for me. She said, uh, they're, they're for that racist bitch. And um, so I think she thought she got moved because of me. Um, he was trying to move these women off the line but the threats were just too much. I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I told Sheila Wells that night, the only thing I said to Sheila Wells, I'll be totally honest, is I told her if she said she was gonna whoop my ass, she better whoop it right now. And she didn't say anything, she just snarled her nose up and I walked out. Cause I'm pretty sure there was other women suffering from the same harassment. I'm pretty sure he wasn't the only one. I can believe that. From sexual harassment? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. The night that I was working there, there was a guy um, that come out of the paint room. Uh, I told I told my human resources about this man. This man came out and was uh, talking about this girl's titties that was working right next to me. He was all like, what happened to your titties? And she's like, what, what do you mean? He's like, well, you don't have any. And, I mean, he would come and call me tight butt. And, oh, I like that tight ass. I can't wait to get yeah. into that. I mean. You wouldn't believe there was the things that this guy in the paint room that Han said. It's just, he was sick, and he was married. You know, that that's the big thing, he was married. And uh, anyway, so uh, I do want to throw this in there. I worked with two other utilities. They know everything that happened. This video doesn't sum up everything that happens, okay? The, um, you know, Jesse uh, Jones and Erica Barmont, they, they, they know everything that happened. And I come to them with everything that happened. They were the utilities. We had no PTLs at the beginning. And um, they won't testify for me. They won't testify for me. Um, they know the remarks she made. They know the, the hostile work environment. They know how hostile it got.